Where is the deputy? <laughs> Eaten by a bear? I'll check out that map. Uh, worth memorizing before we get swallowed up by the trees. I think I hear someone. I'm not walking all the way back Could down. be our deputy. I can go take a look. Hey, over here. Hey there. Agent Casey, right? Sheriff Breaker said you'd be coming by to take over the case. You're half right. Anderson? Saga Anderson. I'll be leading this case. Seems you already know my partner, Alex Casey. Shoot. Sorry about that, ma'am. I'm Deputy Mulligan. I just figured that, you know, that, uh... Where are those damn feds gonna show up, Mulligan? Federal agents right here, Thornton. My partner, Thornton, <laughs> down at the crime scene. He's not what you call the sharpest axe in the shed. Were there any witnesses? Yeah, a couple out-of-towners. I wonder what they were doing sneaking around the woods at night. I mentioned the city folk. It's pretty suspicious. Not that we have anything against city folk, cried Thornton. But don't worry. Sheriff Breaker took them back to town a while ago. What can you tell us about the crime scene? Tell them about the heart. I was getting to that, Thornton. <laughs> well, we reckon there are some, uh, organs that are currently outside the victim's person when they should be, well, you know, inside. I want to see the body. How do we get there? Oh, sure, that's real simple. Just through the hole in the fence, down the hill towards the lake, around the old convenience store. You can't miss it. Everything's been closed since the area was fenced off. The store, the campground, all of it. Hey, Mulligan, tell them I'm here, waiting. I'll show them around. They got it, Thornton. Before we get to the crime scene, there's time to review the facts of the case so far. Make sure I'm seeing the clues clearly. The Mind Place. My version of the Mind Palace technique. To sift through clues and work the case. Building the Mind Place again for each case. Using each field office as a model in my head. The facts are on the board. Everything we know about the previous murders. Worth taking another look. I see you're already hard at work, Anderson. Close to cracking it? We're just getting started. Let's head down the hill to the crime scene. Hey, Casey. You putting me in charge. Why now? Look, Anderson, you're a better detective than I am. You've cracked cases that had the rest of us baffled. I don't want to slow you down. Are you thinking of retiring? You know what happens to cops who say this is their last case. Mm-hmm. Real funny, Anderson. Stairs are out. 
You okay to jump down? I'm not that old. <clears throat> Whoa. Not a bad place to get murdered. Hmm. If getting back to nature is your thing. Damn. Should have brought an umbrella. I like the rain. The only thing around here that feels like home. You think the local law had the sense to put up a tarp? Hmm. If they did, next coffee's on me. Deputy Thornton, I take it. That's me, at your service, ready to get this case solved. Now the body's behind the store. Come on, I'll show you. So, FBI, huh? That's so cool. Hunting down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. You forgot the UFO cover-ups. Those are real? You guys hiring? Oh, he's Let's just see this body, shall we? Now this is the scene of the crime. We found him on the table. And we didn't touch nothing. You know, procedures and stuff. Thanks, Deputy. No tarp. You owe me a coffee. Okay. Let's start by examining our guest of honor. Does this fit the M.O. of the previous murders? Step one. Examine the corpse. Body is positioned on the table. Ritualistic. Another body turns up just as we arrive in town. Coincidence? Inside stab wound, chest cut open, heart removed. The killer left the heart right next to the body. Bruising on the wrist from the cargo straps holding him down. removed from chest, strapped by the wrists. Definitely matches the previous murders. But this time the heart and the straps were left behind. More clues to work with. This makes four murders that we know about. Is our victim who killed him need to find more clues large amount of blood on the table the victim died here multiple people were here multiple killers someone was drinking beer they spent time here waiting someone left in a hurry knocked the tripod over 
Was it for a camera? Any idea who the victim is? Oh, I sure do. His name is Nightingale. He was FBI. He came to town about 13 years ago. Now, I haven't heard a word about him since. Well, until now. Nightingale? Robert Nightingale? Oh, yes. You probably knew him. Brothers in arms. Oh, and sisters. So you knew our victim? Well, I didn't recognize him in his current state. But yeah, I ran into him a few times at Quantico. Never worked any cases together. After his partner got killed in the field, he went off the deep end. Got the boot pretty quick after that. So what happened to Nightingale after the Bureau let him go? I only know the rumors. Depression led to booze, booze led to paranoia. He got some wild ideas in his head, chased ghosts until he fell off the map. Guess he ended up here. I bet there's more to that story. But no happy ending. Nightingale went missing 13 years ago, 2010. The same as all the other victims. Certainly fits the pattern. Makes me wonder what was going on that year. Probably something this town wants to forget. I think that's everything. For now, at least. Mm-hmm. Anything clicking yet? Not sure. Need to think about it. Robert Nightingale, ex-FBI, came to Bright Falls 13 years ago. They planned for the murder to happen here. Passing the time with equipment ready. They will... Hello. Just how much coffee have you had today, Charlie? <laughs> Don't know. Don't oh dear. Cute. Let me guess, the FBI, welcome to Bright Falls. It's nice to have you here. I got you both some coffee. Oh, it's Washington's finest. Nice to meet you, Sheriff. I'm set for coffee. You know, I wouldn't say no to another. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. This is Agent Alex Casey. Tim Brinker. And let me just say, I'm happy you two are here. Frankly, we could use the help. Your deputies said you had a couple of witnesses here. They made them sound like suspects. Mulligan and Thornton are still on about that? No, no, the bookers don't strike me as the murdering type, but you can decide for yourselves. They're just inside having coffee and pie to calm their nerves. I'll see what they have to say. Casey, you compare notes with the sheriff. Take your time. We've looked through the case files you sent over, Sheriff. And you had many people besides the known victims? Excuse me. I'm Agent Saga Anderson. Are you the bookers? That's us. I'm Tammy, and he's Ed. Hello, officer. Just Saga is fine, Ed. So, are we being charged with anything? Because if not, we'd love to get back to our hotel and decompress after what we saw. Take a bath, screw into pillows, that kind of thing. We're not charging you. I just have a few questions. Nothing to stress about, okay? So, what did you see in the woods? This naked dude came out of the lake, and 
He was acting crazy, shouting weird shit at us. He must have been on something. Unless skinny dipping at dawn is a thing around here. Then we heard shooting. We ran into these psychos in deer masks. They were tearing into the naked guy with knives, like some kind of satanic cult. And then we bolted and called the cops. What were you doing at Colgin late last night? I'm a writer. True crime. We're here from New York, doing some research on a famous novelist, Alan Wake, who went missing here. I was down at the lake, getting some details. Perfectly legal. What makes you say it was a cult? <laughs> the masks and knives aren't enough. Me. They were shouting, cult of the tree. The cult of the tree. Called the, the tree. Uh, oh, and then we found out. The whole thing was terrifying. That's all. The cult of the tree. What aren't the bookers telling me? I found their necklace. The symbol is two triangles. The cult wants their spruce tree bag, Tammy. Finders keepers, Ed. My publisher will want this on the cover. Tammy found something. A necklace belonging to one of the cultists. The bookers were at Cauldron Lake. Why? The fence was built to hide what's there. They say the rider fell in the lake. Private party. No trespassing. My book has questions. Past the bolt cutters. They broke in for the sake of Tammy's book. Nothing to do with a the murder. They were telling the truth. So you found something there, right? A necklace these cultists may have dropped. Okay. Wow. How did you put that together? It's evidence. You need to hand it over. Okay. Okay. Told you not to keep that thing to me. Thanks. This could prove to be helpful. Perfect. We're not gonna find out you're the Grand Wizard or something, are we? Played some D&D back in the day. The wizard was always my favorite class. Morning, Sheriff. Looks like you have some guests. Ah, uh, morning, Ted. Yeah, real important guests. Deerfest. Always draws a crowd, right? <laughs> Too true. More the merrier. Have a good one, Sheriff. Hey, what do you know about that waitress from the diner? <laughs> Rose? Yeah, she's a bit of a space case. She always has been. Why? What'd she do now? She kept saying that my daughter drowned. She even knew my name. It was all very weird. Rose has a talent for saying the weirdest thing possible, but it's best not to take it personally. Hey, boss. Corpse is downstairs ready to go. Yep, in the morgue, all prepped. I'd like to take a closer look as soon as possible. Appreciate the support, Sheriff. I'll be right with you, sir. Yep, yep. Just here to pay my ticket. Whenever you're ready to it take it. It doesn't my budge. Hey. So we share a morgue with the funeral home next door. It's a shoestring budget. I guess you guys don't have that problem, though. Our only coroner rotates between a few other towns and he's away this week, but you can handle this, right? I'm qualified to perform examinations, yes. Something about morgues, they always cheer me up. I can't say I feel the same. 
He's joking. Okay. Let's take a look at our patient. I'll start with the external inspection before performing the internal examination. What was the cause of death? What other clue? Uh huh. They did leave something inside his chest. There's writing on here. Can't make it out. Writing? How'd they manage that? The body shows signs of being submerged in water post mortem. It doesn't add up. Defensive wounds. They put up a fight. This looks like text. A tattoo? <laughs> Time to see what Nightingale's body can tell us. Keep trying. <clears throat> Chest wound is cause of death, but the corpse is bloated, waterlogged. Doesn't add up. Hmm. We're dealing with an organized group of killers, not a lone serial killer. <laughs> There's definitely something in his chest. Did the killers leave it there? I need to know more about the code of the tree if I'm going to shut them down. That's not right.
It's the same type of page we found at Cauldron Lake. Nightingale hunted Saga. Didn't see her. The Taken could not see into bright light. Light hurt them, made them vulnerable. Nightingale had no heart, but here he was, killing. Someone's created a fucked up fantasy about us.